Okay, so initial values. They are basically the, the well, lack of a better word, the starting point. It's where the problem begins. And then you'll see this number kind of morph and change as the problem goes on. Another thing that it might be, instead of like a starting point, is it could be like a one-time fee. Um, imagine if you had a pipe burst in your house and you had to call a plumber to come and fix it. The first thing they're going to tell you on the phone is, is hey, we'll be happy to come take a look at it, but it's going to be let's just say $50 to come and, and look at it. Um, $50 is a service fee. Then we'll be charging you $75 for every hour of work it takes to fix the problem. So that $50 fee is just a, a initial value. It's, it's that extra little fee that comes. Um, the rate of change, well, that's something that's happening again and again in the problem. And so uh, if, if we had to, to go and use the analogy again for the plumber, uh, again, they were like, hey, it's 50 bucks just to look at it. That's your fee. And then they're like, plus, we're going to charge you $75 for every hour of work. And this is going again and again and again. And so this would be your rate of change, and this would be your initial value. And the, the other thing is, is that it doesn't have to be a fee for the initial value. Again, it could just be a starting point, and then the rate of change changes it. And we'll look at, at that scenario in a bit. Um, but the big thing is, is that there is a relationship between the initial value and the rate of change. So let's get straight to a story problem so we can find the initial value, the rate of change, and see how they impact each other. Um, at the beginning of a long cruise, a cruise ship had 900,000 gallons of fuel, uh, and it was consuming it at a rate of 4,200 gallons per hour. So the initial value, that's kind of like the starting point, and you can see where, oh, we had 900,000 gallons of fuel, and it's going to start being burned off with the use there. So that's what the initial value is. That's not the one-time fee. That's your starting point. Okay. But what's happening over and over again in this problem? It's the 4,200 gallons per hour. Again, it's, it's, it's going to be happening every hour. It's burning 4,200 gallons of fuel. So how does that rate of change impact the initial value? In this problem, think about what you had at the beginning. You had 900,000 gallons of fuel at the beginning. After one hour, it's going to burn off 4,200 uh, gallons of fuel, and you're left with 895,800 gallons of fuel at that point after one hour. And just to make sure you get the picture, after another hour, it's going to burn another 4,200 gallons of fuel off. And so as a result, you'd be even lower. So how is that rate of change impacting the initial value? It's making the initial value go lower and lower. So let's take a look at another example here. John has $100 in his savings account. He's able to add about $25 each week. What's your initial value? Well, what do you start with? 100 bucks. Okay. Now, what's happening as that goes on? Well, every single week, um, he's adding $25. So there you go. There's, there's your rate of change, 25 bucks each week. How are they impacting each other? Well, take a look at your initial value, and then fast forward a week and see what would happen. And you can see that in this case, it's actually making the initial value go up. So the rate of change can make your initial value go up or down. It just kind of depends on the scenario. But it's a, a key component for us to be able to figure out how to build the equations, and that's what we're going to do next.